In this video we're going to explore the auto placement rules in grid a little bit more. So I've got a grid here and you can see that if I take this browser window in and out we're auto filling the cells and we've got these colors here were all laid out one in each cell of the grid. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make some of these items span more than one track. So rather than just having things sit in the individual cells, we can ask them to span tracks, both rows and columns. So let's have a look at that. So this one, span two, we've got some of these items have got a class applied to them so we can span. And I'm going to say grid, column, end, span two. And you can see that some of them are now spanning two column tracks, and we do the same for rows. So you've now got some square blocks in the grid, and you can see how they reflow. And let's do the same for our span three classes. So now I've got some items that are spanning three columns and three rows. And then this class, tall four, I'm just going to say on this one, grid, row, end, span four. So we'll end it with some which are kind of tall, skinny items. Now you can see here that we've got gaps left in the grid. And this is because as grid progresses along and it lays out items, when it comes across a space where it can't fit an item, it'll just move on to the next line. So we're seeing that here, we're laying out these two, then we've got a gap, and then we end up with this big block, so that wouldn't fit here. We can actually change this behavior. So in this default case, grid is staying in source order. It's not taking things out of DOM order. Everything's just staying in the order that they already are in the DOM. We can change that. If on the element where we configure our grid, we say grid, auto flow, dense, you can see that grid is now backfilling the gap. So we end up with this nice tightly packed grid. So what's happening here is that grid is progressing forward. When it finds something that will fit into a gap that's already left, it picks it up, it takes it out of source order, and it puts it into that gap, which is fine for something like this, or perhaps an image gallery or what have you, wouldn't be so good for your form. So you need to be very careful using this kind of property. However, for certain types of layouts, that's a very nice effect. And just finally, we can also position items onto the grid and they'll be dealt with before the rest of the grid is laid out. So I'm going to say this white block. I want this to be grid row 3. You can see how it now moves to the third row. And I'm actually going to span it right across the grid. So starting at column line 1 and ending at minus 1, which is the final line. So in a left to right language, line 1 is this line, minus 1 is the end line. That would be reversed if you were working in a right to left language. And let's do the same with this black one here. And there you have it, that element now spans right across the grid um, and as we change the size of the grid the items will just flow around them. These things are going to be placed first before the others. Now you can, all you need to do is change which line it's on and it will just hop down into the next row. And you don't need to do any kind of clearing or anything like that because that item is in its own row on the grid.